from Melrose Arts, this is Art in Action, a series of live art demonstrations by prominent local artists. Working before an audience, the artists describe their process and answer questions about their technique. They show you their approach to art in a very personal way. From the art of encaustic, reverse painting on glass, fiber art, and calligraphy, it's all here. Sponsored by Melrose Arts, a volunteer group dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose. These monthly art demos are open to the public and free of charge. Today on Art in Action, printmaker Susan Jaworski Strank shows us how to create a three color reduction linoleum print by carving into just one block of linoleum using inexpensive tools. Multiple colors will be offset by hand on paper. No printing press is needed. For over 30 years, Susan has been experimenting with this difficult printmaking technique, creating prints with rich textural and colorful results. What's nice about printmaking is that you can make more than one image. Even with a mono print, you can create a, a ghost with that. And um, for me, I started out with etchings. And I love making etching. I love making the plate. I love figuring out how to ink it up to you know, the richness that it deserves. And then once I find the solution, you know, I put the plate away and say, I'll make my addition later, which never happens. With this technique, I get to the last color and it's ready, the addition's ready for my signatures. No going back. It's, um, it's a, a process where you only use one uh, block. Traditionally, wood block relief prints are um, done with multiple blocks. There's uh, one block for every color and then a key block which holds, you know, kind of like a skeleton, usually done in black, that holds the design together. It has no grain like wood. You have to, when you, when you work with wood, you have to uh, be concerned about the grain, the way you're cutting it. Linoleum has no grain whatsoever. Um, and also it doesn't really have a tradition. You know, you kind of, <laughs> you just do what you want to do with it. It's not like, you know, wood block where, you know, there was a set of rules that one learned. So this is a form of um, relief printing. It's a technique where uh, we're only concerned about the very top surface. This is what gets inked up. And um, um, I'll use certain tools like lino um, these linoleum cutters. They're really used for wood and um, you gouge the surface. And then there's these little hooked kinds where you pull um, towards you. You can use knives, you can use Dremel tools, uh, hammers, anything that can make a, a, a scratch or a dent in it that pushes the printing surface down. So the first thing that I'm going to do, um, and this is just a, a traveling jig. And because my um, prints are made with uh, a series of layers upon layers upon layers and upon layers, you have to have a way to register the paper. It has to come in contact with that print the same way every time you put it to um, put it in this chase. So I have a very I have a very large, large one, but the premise is, is that there's a series of nails at one top. And then there's also a square corner where your plate or your linoleum can fit in there every time. So the first thing what I do is, you know, I'll impale the paper. So I can like put it anywhere. But the most important thing is that when I go to print my uh, block, this paper, because of the holes that have been impaled, it'll always come down in the same place. So let's do three. So this is my jig. And when I do workshops too, you know, this is such an easy way to create a jig. Inexpensive. There's, um, you know, a corner of a mat with um, foam core. And one more. Now because we're going to be lifting this paper up multiple times, it's um, the holes are going to get stretched. And so what I do is I reinforce these holes with tape. 
I don't use a press, although I do have one for the etchings. I don't use a press because I, I find that if, you know, when you look at these prints, there's, um, I like the previous color coming up from below. And if I used a press, it would just smoosh it down and it would be completely opaque. So there might be an area when I'm inking up the linoleum, there might be an area where I want a softer touch. So I'll just, you know, use a softer touch and then use a lot of elbow grease in the rest of, the rest of the area. So this is my very first reductive print, my very first one. And the first, the first question that you ask, you know, you have your design. I don't work with color, I work with line. I have a nice, a nice design, nice line design. And the first question you're going to ask is, is there going to be any white of the paper in my design? And, and those are the first areas that you're going to remove in your linoleum. You're going to gouge these, these shapes out of the linoleum. This is the first state. It's called a state. This is the second, or this is the third state. I don't know what happened to the second one, but you can see what color I used. So I removed the white areas. I took, take a brayer. You know, I charge it up with ink, and then I go over the surface <laughs> completely, and then I put that piece of paper on top of it like that. So once, you know, I have 25 or 26 of these printed, what I'll do is now I have this blue on, the, on my, my um, image. And what I have to do now is ask myself, you know, in this design, where do I want this particular color to remain? And it's those areas that I'm going to go back to my linoleum and gouge out. So you can see in this third state, the blue that was that was the areas next that were removed and I believe I put a flannel a flannel color on for the second state it was like a gray but because you're putting a, a, a whitish um, of, um, chroma, uh, yeah a chroma of, of a gray on top of it it almost looks flannel because of the blue that sparkles through it's kind of a nice technique so being observant too, when you're trying all these things, you know, you start to start having a, you know, a suitcase full of ideas. Um, and then of course, then I have the gray on, and, it's, it's, and that's how, it, how it's developed. But what the interesting part is, I think this is the fourth state, that's after this one. It, the questions that one asks, uh, you know, is first of all, color relationship. That's why I never start off with a, a finished image so I could just reproduce it in linoleum. That's not, that's not what I'm after. It's just like painting, you know, when you're mixing up color and you put it on the, the canvas and you're going, I don't think that's, that's the right color. And so you go back to your palette and you mix some. So it's all about color relationships. But the th why, why I like it is that the image actually grows. It's like sculpture, or maybe the opposite of sculpture, those Michelangelo sculptures where he's got this, this marble and he starts chipping away and this form starts to emerge. Well, that's exactly what happens in this process. You know, and there's not much here. I mean, I have an idea where I want to go. <clears throat> I don't know the colors I'm going to, going to end up with. And um, the mark making, you know, when you look at these marks and the development of the, of the clouds, I better start thinking about, you know, putting some leaves, leaves in, but you can see the forms coming to life. And now this one, you know, with a lighter, a lighter value on top of the brown and blues, you know, now I have the, you can start seeing the, um, you know, the, the middle um, ground, fruit trees and then the, the one that's up close and the, the little village is developing more. Uh, I don't know if, can you see the bottom one? So the, you know, the, the whole thing is taking that first step and hoping 
that as you're going through these states, this is, this is seven times. It's been um, printed seven times, and that's the final color is, is, I don't know what the final color is. I think it's the turquoise color. I usually wiggle the, the, you know, the cutter into that. You can use sandpaper, you know, to soften up the, um, the edges, you know, because it's, it's a very graphic process. Um, you know, once you use that gouge and gouge a piece out of the linoleum, that edge is pretty darn hard. Now, there are some tricks to the trade if you did want to soften it. This um, one right here, the um, distant mountain, that's not a hard edge. It's a very soft edge. This is the first, um, that would be the first state. You have to ignore everything except uh, a rectangle that has this blue shape here and then this gray shape here. And you just take that brayer and you blend those two colors together to get that nice, that nice soft effect. And I did that in, in this um, print as well for the reflection of the mountains right here. And I learned over, I learned over time that, you know, not every color needs to be printed at that specific state, that you can, you can do multiple colors during one pass. You know, you can... Um, so the faster you start removing areas in the background, then you can start you know, using small brayers and depositing the inks in different areas. The colors look fairly opaque. Do you have much control over the opacity? Well, like I had explained that I can control that by the touch, you know, while I'm offsetting that ink. You know, I don't have to use a lot of elbow grease. But there's also um, a transparent base you can use. So if you start off with a lot of transparent base and you start adding you know, the um, litho inks to it, um, you can get a transparent. And then you can play with the, you know, the previous color changing the, the, um, the top one, the new color. I'm trying something different today. This is contact paper on mat board. And the contact paper is that soft, spongy uh, material. So I figured, you know, it should be easy enough to put a mark in it. So this is going to be my printing surface. I'm not going to draw anything. You know, I'm just going to wing it. What, what, am I, what am I going to do? Why am I doing this? Why am I removing um, areas? If I didn't want any of the white of the paper to show through, I would just go ahead and ink it and print it, and I wouldn't have any white of the paper. Anyways, this will give me an idea how, how this is going to work. I'm hoping that it's going to release from the, from the cardboard. Okay, hold your breath. This is so much more interesting than me gouging away. Oh, and I wanted to say, you know, this doing it, I found that if you did the black first, let me go back to these. The principle is, is that, you know, a lot of times we want to create positive shapes. I don't know if you can see that, but the back of the chair here, you know, that's positive. So you want to remove all the negatives so that you ink it up and you get a positive form. But if you have delicate lines that you want, you know, bold, what you do is um, you print dark, and then it's just like drawing. You know, you're taking your gouge, and you're drawing these lines with it. No need to, you know, remove all that area to have a positive. I'm actually working in the negative because I have a dark color on there. So I'm just using my, um, you know, my gouge and I'll just gouge into the linoleum and think of it as drawing. You know, this is a finished print, but let's say that I did have um, 
this dark brown on and I wanted to make these beautiful lines. I'm also to do it right now because I'm going to be putting, you know, white on top of it and with white and having the black removed, you, know, you get these beautiful lines. There's no way you could actually carve, you know, I mean, you could, but the joy of using this as an expressive tool is, you know, it's so much easier to draw with it as opposed to removing the linoleum around it. That's why I often start with dark colors. So this is working nice. You're not going to get the mark making that I was talking about. We're going to be working basically with, with shapes, right? So this is a brayer. They come in all lengths and diameters. This is speedball. I mean, they're still expensive, but you can get them, um, you know, you can get any size roller. Those people that have done uh, mono printing, you know, those big, those big rollers. Um, okay, so let's get this printed. So the first thing you want to do is just put a little dab of do ya. You're going to take a putty knife. You're going to spread it out. And you want a nice dry sound. Once it starts sounding like, you know, you're stepping in Marshville, you have too much on your brayer. So you're just transferring that ink to here. So that, that sound right there, that's what your what the linoleum, you know, when you put the ink on it, it has like a little pulling sound. Okay. Don't want to, you know, if it's dry sounding, you don't have enough. Um, it takes a lot of ink, an awful lot of ink. And it takes a while to fully charge that linoleum. It's not going to happen the first time around. So the first one's going to be kind of light and then the second one's gonna get a lot better. And by the third, this is fully charged when you put that paper down. And some of the tricks that I use is, be, especially if you don't have any, uh, any white areas in that first one, once you print it and there's some light areas, well, even though there is white, what you can do is then you can, um, not a fully charged brayer, because then it would just get, then it would be too much. So you, you know, you could take your brayer and put it on a piece of paper and go over that to get it completely opaque. Uh, the next one is not a problem. It's always this first one. If you want it opaque, that's the way to do it. I found that um, if, it's, if it's, it's light along the edge, then what you do is you take scrap paper, take scrap paper, you lay it along that edge, and you have your brayer that charged. Go ahead and, and do that. Remove the layer and it's opaque. So there's your mirror image, why it's important to um, reverse your image. Okay, here's another thing. You know, on my block, I'll, I'll write on the side bottom because it's just so easy, you know, if I'm gonna, you know, all of a sudden just throw that baby in there like that, and what would happen? It's not gonna register. So it's always important you could put a piece of tape there to remind yourself that this is the, this is the bottom. So of course now you gotta wipe it off. Now you come back and you now have this blue. And so the next question is, you know, where do I want the blue to remain? Because um, maybe I'll put a black on top of it. So I just removed um, a shape. I'm going to add a little. I'm not going with white because we got white paper. So 
So I'm always, I'm, I, what I'm doing is when I roll this up, I'm going to roll it, pick it up, drop it to the bottom, roll it, drop it to the bottom. If I just go like that, it's only going to be, you know, inking half a circle here. This, um, you could, there's so many different kinds of papers that, you know, traditionally people like to use oriental paper, but because I, you know, I have so many layers, sometimes up to 12 layers, I need a good um, tough paper. So when you use heavier paper, that's an awful lot of rubbing. For me, color is so important. I mean, if it wasn't, I'd just be just drawing. I think, you know, the compositions are very important to me, but, um, color relationships, you know, using colors that you wouldn't ordinarily put together um, and just see if, if they sing or, you know, it's an emotional response too. But, it, you know, to be at your table mixing up inks, I, I love it. I just love it. I mean, and as far as my inks go, um, I use oil-based inks. I use lithography inks. And these lith litho inks can be, um, depending on what you're adding to it, can be used for etchings, it can be used for my block print. So no sense having, you know, a <laughs> shopping mart of, of inks. It's just the additive that's important. So there's so many different um, techniques. I mean, there you, if you want to try um, Monoprinting or stencils. I use sometimes I put stencils on that if I just want a certain color in the re, in that area. So I did pay attention that that is supposed to be the bottom. And you can use your hand. You can use a brayer as long as it's clean. And I don't have to soak my paper. There's, there's certain printmaking um, techniques that you have to have, you know, pre-soak your paper. Like etchings, has, that paper has to be soft to... So there's that blue shape behind the white shapes. So now we'll go with for another color. Okay, let's get a um, another color going here. Um, as far as shapes go. You know what's going to happen, I don't know if you've seen the progression, but that first removal sits on the top plain and then the blues in the back and if I put some something else but I could also you know use this space and see what happens in the you know in the in that space um, if it sits forward this process was um, was started by Picasso he's the one that came up with this crazy way of, of working he nicknamed it uh, the suicide print because you can never go back and change your mind uh, as far as the process goes. All these layers that I'm working on, I can never go back and change a color or remove a little bit of the linoleum. I can only do that at the time of my, the printing that I am. And usually it's a, a reductive process. And if you look at this, I'm a, I work in linoleum. And if you get down to the last color, there's very little left of the linoleum that's printable. So you can never go back. That's why it's called a suicide print. New color. This is going to be the final color. So it's, a, it's a process. So how long do you think it takes you from start to finish on one piece? You know, they're all so different. You know, you, you, know, you can take up to three months to, to complete it. Feel that it's finished. Yeah. And there's, there was one print where I just kept working and working and working. And when I finally got to the last color, I thought I just, I hated it. It was like, this is just too, you know, detailed and busy. And so I put it away. And the next thing you know, you know, I looked at it. 
it, you know, it turned out really, really nice. And, you know, too, you, you don't want to rush the process in between these states because, like I said, you, once you commit, you know, you just, you know, so you've got to be really certain what, that what, what you want next and color-wise. And so it's not a hurry-up, definitely not a hurry-up process at all. Mm -mm, a lot of thinking. All right, so um, I don't know if this is too thick. But I'm, what I'm going to do is, um, let's say I, I really want to save that, that this linoleum or contact paper. I don't want to remove anything because I want to fool around with some multiple colors in that area. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a mask. All right, where's the bottom? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Somebody's paying attention. I'm not. Just keep talking. <laughs> Thank you. That would have been a... Yeah, would not have had the effect. So there's a nice light touch. So if you wanted to, you could maybe in an area, let's say you really wanted it opaque. So as long as the paper stays, you know, uh, in the, in the, nails, you know, you can take as much peaking time. What do you think about more the, the design aspect or the printing process? Look at that moon shape. That kind of turned out kind of cool. Why did it do that? Oh, I know what happened. The, the blue pulled away onto the onto the mask. That's kind of nice, huh? And they do happen. Yep, they do happen. So you put that in your repertoire. Oh, there you go. Susan Jaworski's Trank has demonstrated the reductive printmaking process for creating colorful relief prints. This method utilizes a single linoleum block for all the colors of a multicolor print instead of the traditional approach of using one block for each color. After each successive printing of a color, the surface of the block is reduced while at the same time the print surface is built up with multi-layered colors. Once the last color is printed, all that is needed is the artist's signature to complete the edition. Be sure to check Susan's website at applesiderpress.net for further examples of her fine work and to learn of upcoming shows and classes. Visit melrosearts.com for information about Melrose Arts, upcoming events, and future art in action demonstrations. Melrose Arts, dedicated to encouraging the visual arts in Melrose.